All right, let's do some filleting in, uh, in Rhino. Um, I've got some surfaces that I just quickly created. It can be anything, uh, but we're gonna use this as an example to uh, make some nice blends between these three edges here. And I'm gonna start off with a few tips that I think are really gonna help you with, with modeling. Uh, the first one is build the theoretical sharps. So what I love to do is to enclose a volume with sharp edges first before I start putting in any blends or, or fillets. Uh, and the reason for that is what I see a lot is that people will build this service, they'll build this service, they're happy with it, they'll put a blend in it, and now they don't know how to fill this. If you build the theoretical sharps first and then you start to put in your fillets, the, the way they're supposed to flow becomes natural. Uh, it, it just jumps out at you as you start building. It's obvious what the next steps are. So build the theoretical sharps first. Uh, two, think about edge flow. The order of operations is really important. Uh, if you fill it this edge first, and after that you fill it these two, you will get edge flow that follows this line and goes in this direction. If you fill it this first, you will get edge flow that follows this line and then goes in this direction. And if you fill it this first, you will have uh, the second fillet go along this line and then follow this direction. That's actually the one we're going to build. Um, and so it'll, I'll quickly demonstrate it, um, just what that looks like. So if we build this first, you'll see that the point has disappeared and we have an extra edge. And so if we build a second fillet on top of this, it'll flow in this direction. Um, so order of operations is important. Think about edge flow and then build from large to small. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. What I see a lot is that people will have a small fillet and, and they'll, they'll want to have like a large blend that wraps around it and it almost never works. There are some cases where it can work um, but if you can, you know, pill, put, your, put in your large radius fillets first and then, you know, move subsequently smaller and smaller and smaller until you're done. So with that said, let's get started. So we are going to have a couple different radius, uh, radii in here. So we're going to have an 8 mil blend uh, with 8 mil between the rails here. And then we're going to have a tapered blend that starts as 5, wraps around this and goes to uh, 2.5. So uh, it's already joined, so we can go uh, blend this together with blend edge. Uh, eight, yep, I want to accept that. That's good enough. We're going to repeat that. FF, I have it hot keyed up, but this is the blend edge command. So I'm going to go there, there, and there. Now when I hit accept, it's going to fail. Um, it is not showing. Oh, there it is. There, it had to think a little bit before it was failing. So we're going to reduce that, we're going to reduce that. And the reason it failed is we didn't follow the third rule built from large to small. We put in an 8 mil blend and then we followed it up with another 8 mil blend uh, and it failed. So now we have this and you could say, I'm happy with this, but you'll see that there's a lot of isoparms here and there's a lot of bunching. And the reason that is happening is that this is a trimmed edge that has a lot of control points. And then this line changes direction and makes this is a nice large transition. This one is smaller, so that's why we get the bunching. So let's see if we can improve on that by deleting these surfaces that were created automatically and putting some other surfaces manually. So we're going to duplicate a few edges. We're going to duplicate that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, hit accept. Now these, if I run the what command, You'll see that they're degree three and control point six. I want them to be degree five um, because these are secondary surfaces. And I want them to have six control points. So I've selected them all and you can see that this has a bunch of control points. We're gonna rebuild that and we're gonna do a degree five, six control points, hit accept. Now because they're rebuilt, they've changed shape. And so we're gonna have to match them to the edges uh, subsequently. Uh, we'll do that in a bit. Um, next, what I want to do is I don't want this edge to change direction. I want it to follow this. And the, the easiest way to do it is to create a tangent line from this, extend it out, and then project it onto the top surface and this fillet surface. Now, I have this hot keyed up. Um, so it's, uh, it's basically a line tangent uh, 
from another line. And I'm going to repeat that, that curve, and that one. And that's joint. I want it separated. Now I want to project this guy and that guy onto these guys. CD view. So let's see what these look like. What? Uh, degree 3, control point 6. So we're going to rebuild those guys. Curve, curve, rebuild, 5, 6. Yes, I'm happy with that. And so now we need to match this all up. And also, we want to have this blend nicely into that. So I'm going to duplicate a couple more edges. This edge and that edge. Yep, set that. And then I'm going to trim those back with these projected curves. Trim that back and trim that back. Yes. Okay. Uh, go to the top view. Let's blend these together. Curve. We have more space now. And so we got that. And so now I'm just going to move this to there. You can see we have a nice lead in and I'm going to accept that. Okay, so now we have this edge built. We have this existing edge. We can get rid of these guys now because uh, we're not going to use them. And we can get rid of all our transition surfaces that were given us by doing this uh, automatically. So now we have all these edges. Now we need to match these guys to, um, to the edges because we rebuilt them. They've changed shape. They're no longer curvature continuous uh, with the edges. So we're just going to go in and match them really quick. Oh, that didn't work. Now you'll see that they change very little. So even though we rebuilt them um, and they've changed, they haven't changed very much. No, we don't want that one. And then the final one, this guy, except that. And then here at the bottom, this guy and that guy, that guy and that guy. Okay. Can't remember if I did these. Looks like I already did. Okay. So now we can see we have a nice four sided hole here that we can build. We have a nice four sided hole here that we can build. And we have a nice four sided hole here that we can build. But here we have an issue. We have this edge that is still sticking out. Now we can try to just use this curve and trim it back. But sometimes you'll get like an edge break or a little sliver here at the edges. So rather than just doing it like this, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select this guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. I'm going to isolate those really quick. And I'm going to untrim the starting surface first. So now I have, I know that this extends beyond this trim curve that I um, want to use. So I want to trim with this guy this guy and that guy and I want to get rid of that okay and now we should be in pretty good shape to build our surfaces and we're going to do uh, sweep twos for that and we're going to do this edge that edge this edge this edge and we want it to be curvature continuous yes accept that now also the this ball corner is the most difficult to maintain curvature continuity so it's the one you want to put in last but if you set it up correct and we're going to find out here in a second um, it should work um, sometimes it doesn't and then you have to go back and figure out what you did wrong uh, i'm going to select that surface edge that surface edge two profiles yep i want curvature i'm going to repeat that and I want that as well. So now we have the final one. And it is important where you select. If you select these guys as your rails and you're making curvature, it is unlikely that you will maintain curvature with the top and bottom surface. Um, if we've set these guys up correctly and we select these as the rails, then there's a pretty good chance you will get curvature continuity through here. Sometimes you don't, uh, then either you haven't set it up correctly or you need to go 
to back in and do a match serve after the fact. So we're going to go with this guy as the first rail, that guy as the second rail. We want the surface edges here. Okay, accept that. And good. Now you can already see that the bunching that we add in here is gone. And so we have this really nice flow. You can already see by the ISO farm that we have this really nice flow through here. So I think this will uh, look pretty good. So CRV, hide. Uh, let's put these guys on this layer. And let's join them together. So now we have a really nice topology wise we have it really nice we have this really nice smooth transition through here we have this really nice smooth transition through here we can already tell by the ISO farms that this is probably going to look pretty good this lines up nicely this lines up nicely so I have a pretty good feeling that this is going to look okay so when we put the zebra map on there, I have it set to vertical and you can see it follow this surface and then we have this nice blend going into here and we have this nice blend going into here and that looks pretty good. If we change it to horizontal, we have this, this, uh, the zebras flow through here pretty nicely. We have this nice transition through this and we have it go from a small radius to a large radius. I'm happy with that as well. Uh, if we put an E map on that. I like to use the fluorescent tube if I'm judging highlights. We can see that we have this really nice flow through here and it blends nicely into the top uh, surface. And then here, same thing, you know, as we go down, it starts walking down this um, uh, surface here. Let's turn that off. And the, the other thing that I like to do is this is just a really quick physical uh, visual check is to just quickly turn off my uh, surface ISO curves and surface edges. If you've done a good job, it should be, in this view, it should be pretty difficult to tell where your surfaces start and end. I mean, obviously we can see that there's a transition, but judging by this, it's pretty difficult to tell where my surfaces start and end. So I think we did a pretty good job and I'm gonna turn my ISO curves and edges back on and I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, as always, happy modeling, and I'll see you in the next one.